The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to uh, the October 24th. Yep, today is October 24th. That makes it the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. Great to be with you. Hey, I would love to hear from you. Uh, got several ways to do that. Uh, you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, uh, you can always send me an email. You can do that by sending the email to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're in our tiger's den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get to these uh, markets out here. Uh, currently, we've got a uh, mixed market, mixed bag. You've got the Dow off about a quarter of a percent at 69 points to the Dow. Downside. Yet the S&P is flat and the NASDAQ 100 is up three quarters of a percent. It's trading out at 61.25, um, probably mostly powered by uh, Microsoft. That's up uh, three bucks right now. Russell's off seven points, about a half a percent. Semis are up two percent. So we do have one of those bifurcated, uh, I can't even say, I can't even express it. But yes, Peter, go Nats. One heck of a game out there. What was the final score? Was it 12 to 2? 12 to 3? 12 to 3, 13 to 3, something like that. In any event, uh, the Wilshire 5000, that's uh, up, and the New York Stock Exchange is down 12 to 3. Thank you. Uh, so, a mixed bag out here. Spot volatility index is basically flat, trading out at 1397. Uh, gold's got a little mojo, uh, maybe headed a tad higher into the 1509 area. That's the top of its daily profile. It's trading out at 1504. Silver's trading up uh, a little over 1% uh, out at uh, 1779. Uh, light Sweet crude is up 51 cents, leading the charge to the upside dollar wise, 43 bucks, 17 percent. It is Tesla. O'Reilly Automotive up 31 bucks or 8 percent. Line Technology, 31 bucks, 14 percent. Lamb Research, 26 bucks. So some movers to the upside, shakers to the downside. It's ADS Alliance Data Systems down 19 bucks or 15 percent. Morningstar is down 12 bucks, 7 percent. Uh, Proto Labs down 11. Uh, Valmont Industries up uh, 10. Arista Networks down about uh, 10 as well. But let's go to the first questions out here. We've got a couple in the uh, queue already. Take as many as we can get. This one coming from Alan D. Alan D writes in. He says, hey, Steve. Hey, Alan. Something concerning to me is where the SPY recently topped out at the 302 level. So 302.63. Let's put this up here. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to put a quarterly chart. I already know what his question is. I started to map out the uh, chart out here. Uh, so uh, to go back to his question, to me, concerning to me is where the SPY recently topped out at the 302 level. I'm not sure why that, but 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 that is a concern of, of uh, Allen's. He says, uh, if you go from the low of 67 in the SPY back to March 2008, the actual low 67.10 and to the recent high and then you do a 0 0.618 retracement level takes you back exactly to 157 which um, which Alan refers to as the breakout level so my assumption that he's referring to this as the breakout levels because the prior highs out here in January of 2000 the high was 155.75 and then the high in 2007 was 157.52 so you're looking at that is the uh, breakout level I would look at it differently but I get what you're seen out here okay um, this may be a coincidence and may be irrelevant if the 302 level is taken out substantially for a long period what are your thoughts on this well first of all I'm not worried at all about these retracement levels out here um, they're interesting to me uh, but uh, I don't take a look at geez the market is going to go back to the 157 area now I don't control what the market is going to do Alan but uh, to do this long scale retracement out here that doesn't bother me. Now, now I want to be able to follow that up. Why? The question should be then, and if Alan and I were having this conversation, which we are, it's just I'm talking to myself, so I'm assuming Alan is talking to me. He'd say, well, why aren't you concerned about that? Well, one of the reasons why I would not be concerned about that is simply because of the performance of, see, 
So technical analysis, I've spent all these hours, thousands, tens, tens of thousands, at least thousands of thousands, that's for sure, more than 10,000, there's no doubt about that. So all these hours putting together a, a set of tools that really helps me to understand what the market is communicating to me, whatever the market is, it doesn't matter the instrument, it doesn't matter the time frame out here. So all that time doing that. And then from a fundamental standpoint, you got to understand that I am a, by uh, education, I am a bean counter. I am a CPA. I still have a license in the state of Florida and Michigan out there. I don't really practice, so to speak, but I'm a numbers guy. So when it comes to numbers, Alan, the most important thing that you want to know for your investments is what type of return are you getting in your dollars? Well, all you have to do is travel around the world. I've been fortunate enough to have done that millions of miles just on Delta Airlines alone. And I haven't really traveled much on their airline for 25 years. But I have traveled around the world. And if there is one thing that I do know, it is the uh, currencies matter. So now the cool thing about my e-signal charts is in one flip of the button, what you and I can go do is we can understand is how are different instruments, uh, how are they trading in major currencies. Now, for major currencies here, all I've done is broken apart uh, the U.S. dollar, uh, a reserve currency, into the other primary reserve currencies. Those would be the euro, the pound, and the yen out here. And when we go back, you mentioned the 2008 bottom. So when I go back to approximately the 2008 bottom, when I say approximately, I have to use quarters. We're 43 quarters into it. So it's not going to be the exact tick to the downside. But I'm being consistent uh, when we take a look at this chart to understand how, it, where is the money, where has the money been flowing? Where have people gotten the largest returns? When I say people, I mean the folks in Japan, the folks in uh, China. Well, I don't have China. The folks in uh, in uh, uh, in Europe, and, uh, in, and and obviously the folks in the UK, part of Europe as well, out there. But how have their returns been? As great as it has been for us, us Americans out here in U.S. dollars, it pales in comparison to the return of the Dow or the S&P 500. Here, the top two uh, category areas, YM on the left, ES on the right. And you'll see that the highest returns have come from those folks who trade in euros, 489%, give or take, versus 394 uh, in terms of dollars, versus 440 in yen and 451 in pounds. Now, the importance of this is take a look at all of the other indices around the globe. On the left-hand side, we can take a look at the DAX, half of the returns, whether it's dollars, euros, yen, pounds versus the Dow. Where's money flowing? Money clearly flowing to the U.S. Take a look at the FTSE. About a quarter, 25% of the returns that we have seen in the Dow, price in all those currencies. Look at the Shanghai almost non-existence, a 23% move off of the uh, 2008 bottom. Take a look at gold, a 39% move versus a 390% move in the uh, Dow. Take a look at the Treasury bonds, 60% move versus 400. So if you take a look at this here, Alan, the important thing, and what I want to say is what's so important is just understanding the old Jerry Maguire, show me the money, foul the money. Even today, since the December lows of last year, the U.S. still the leader of the pack. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the SPY with Alan. Uh, that first segment, we're really just taking a look at the global flow of capital. I can't, there's, there's not anything more important, anything more important than understanding where capital is flowing. What you and I want to invest in are those things that are all going up in price so that everybody at that table is making money. You see, if it's moving an instrument, whatever it is, is moving higher in dollars and lower in uh, yen, or moving higher in dollars and lower in euros, there's your buyer and your seller out there, right? And when everything's moving higher and everybody is making money in their own currency out there, the instruments will continue to move higher out there. It is the most important, the number one, the numero uno most important thing for you to take a uh, look at in trying to understand, let's say, a larger picture. And if you're going to go to the 2008 lows, uh, to the uh, current highs out here, you're trying to take a look at the bigger picture. If you're asking me the question, where is breakout, you, you went back to breakout level uh, up to the highs in 2000, 2007 out here. For me, breakouts really occur by taking a look at the uh, TD setup nine count pattern and understanding where you had nine consecutive closes. In this case here, if something's moving higher, uh, where you had nine consecutive closes in a row, where each close was above the close of the bar that closed four bars earlier out there. And that provides us on a monthly basis. If you were to ask me, hey, Steve, where is breakout support for the SPY? It'd be 223.88 on any kind of a uh, pullback. That's the monthly. If you were to say, well, what is it on the weekly? Well, on the weekly, that level would be at about 276.50 uh, to 256.41, uh, 250. 641 would be the most recent one. If you're asking me on the daily, what does it look like? Well, the daily, and this would be the number that I would be watching, I am watching, um, is uh, is 295.57. The reason that we're watching is because what we have out here is, in effect, at least as of today, we've got a valid TD nine count top. What do I mean by that? Well, if we just simply come back to the low on October 3rd, Okay, the most recent low out here, where price was pulling back inside the SPY and testing its breakout support of 289.27 out here. You never saw two days with a close below that level. 
Um, price then formed a higher intraday high today than it did two days ago. When the TD9 count pattern identifies a top or a bottom, that high should take place in bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. Well, today is the bar following 9. Now, if there is a new high that gets formed tomorrow, Alan, it's telling us about strong momentum to the upside. Doesn't guarantee where price will go to. We can go take a look at tools for that out here. But really, you've got to take things one step at a time versus a larger. The larger picture, I want you to understand where the global flow of capital is going. And it is so predominant in the U.S. When we took a look at an entire basket, we took a look at worldwide markets. We didn't get to it. I was on the page, but it had the Goldman Sachs commodities. We took a look at gold. We took a look at bonds. We took a look at oil. We took a look at China markets, European markets out there. And it is the U.S., the U.S. And that's important because... As you know, many of you uh, either are or uh, have friends or uh, or you use wealth managers out there, right? And wealth managers keep your cash invested all the time, generally speaking. It works that way around the globe. So money has to go somewhere. When you take a look at the large buckets of money, it's going to be invested in the markets. And you certainly want your money invested in those markets where you've got that global flow of capital out there. Now, with regard to, so we know the level to be watching in the SPY, it's very easy. It's 295.57. Uh, because the responsibility here, so sellers right now, let's just see, you know, have, have got the, the clear signal to go ahead and try to push their bets to the downside. That bet to the downside may only get to 295.57. That would be your next buy the dip on a daily basis for the SPY out there, right in that general area. Now, you and I, Alan, we don't use the SPY to make our determination for support or resistance, do we? Exactly. We don't. And the reason that we don't is we don't like using small amounts of information. Instead, what we want to do is we want to use large amounts of information. And for large amounts of information, we take instruments that are trading basically around the clock out there. So the real level to be watching from a daily perspective out here on any push lower is 29.4175. 29.4175 is the last breakout area on a daily basis for the ES Mini out here. If price were to close below that, where would it head to? Very easy. The next breakout level of support, 28.75 and a quarter, which we can see in the ES Mini, that is the level that held. Whereas we saw closes below the breakout level on a daily basis inside the SPY, we don't have that same pattern here inside the ES Mini. As I say, you don't have to trade the futures, but if you're the type of individual that is trying to uh, um, improve your trading skills, understand what the equity markets are doing out there, then please gain access to the equity futures contracts and understand these patterns out here. If, you, if that's what you're trying to, if that's what you're trying to uh, learn, so that's uh, what's going on inside the ES Mini. There's other things that you and or the S and P 500 per se. There's other things you and I can look at. For example. We can look at the horizontal trading ranges out here. Uh, these help us to identify other levels of support or resistance. So really, resistance inside the S&P 500, this is the cash S&P 500, is in about the 30, 90 area, or really this little rising trend line. If the rising trend line were to take place this month, it's priced about 30, 55, give or take out there. We're trading at 30, uh, 05 as we speak right now. So nothing broken out here. 29, 25 has seen a couple of monthly closes in that area. So that's a key level of support. So those are the things that I'd be watching. Uh, Alan, I don't know if I answered your question, but I hopefully I gave you some other pieces of information to simply think about. Uh, so, oh, you see, you guys, this came through as a follow-up. So I heard your answer on the radio guide to my question below. My point was, if you believe the 157 breakout level is going to be tested at some time, this would be an ideal area for the index to move lower and satisfy the 618 retracement. Nah, I, I, I um, okay. I, I mean, that's your perspective. Uh, that's that. We're there are so many other uh, spots that we have to see fail that I I, I just can't. I really I, I'm not I'm not influenced by the mere fact that we just did a retracement from. Uh, low to high, and somehow that magic 0.618 area is where price is going to pull back to. Um, but that's there's two sides of the trade.
And I am definitely not on that side of the trade. To, to, to understand this, I'm not saying that the markets don't move lower, Alan. But I will hear, this is what I will say. I will say we will see 4,000 or 4,500 or, you know, in the uh, S&P uh, before we see uh, 1,570 or somewhere right around there. Now, the, the fact is I can say that, but it doesn't really matter I, because I'm, the way that I'm going to trade or invest is continue to watch the global flow of capital and just simply watch the patterns, the patterns that are out there that give us the uh, uh, pieces of information to help us understand what the markets are doing. So, for example, you know, we were looking at that ES mini chart out there here. Again, we take a look at the ES mini chart. We can see a descending trend line. We're up near where we should see a top. The key is, are we going to see a breakup support? The other level to be watching the ES Mini would be Stevie's Green Line. That's 29.89. So, Alan, let's together. Let's just take this one day at a time out there, not get too caught up into the 4,500 or the 1,500 level for the S&P out here. Topping patterns in play. Let's see what sellers can do over the course of the next several days or maybe a week. Great. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as the number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so Peter and the Dem wanted to uh, kind of go through the same exercise and take a look at uh, gold out here. So here's a way for us to take a look at the global flow of capital when it comes to uh, gold. See how gold is trading. The left-hand panel is gold in dollars. Next to it, uh, going from left to right, is gold priced in euros. Then you've got gold priced in yen and gold priced in pounds. Now, here's the cool thing. Um, when you take a look at the global full flow of capital and you take a look at the way that instruments trade, typically, it's not 100% of the time, but it's in like the 90 percentile, what you will see is you'll see them top out all at the same time. Or what you won't see, okay, and this is the 90 percenter, what you won't see is you won't see gold hit a new all-time high in only one currency. Here we're taking a look at four. Dollar, euro, yen and pound what you can clearly see out here is that gold priced in euros priced in pounds priced in yen has already hit new all-time highs we're nowhere near that well i say we're nowhere near that we're 400 and some odd bucks away from that but you can see the charts out here so the good news is is that we will see gold make new all-time highs it's just simply doing this study, going back and taking a look at, and taking a look at the Dow, priced in currencies, going through all these gyrations out here. What you will see is that these will typically top at the same time, but you never, no, I, I say never, maybe there's an instance, but basically I'll stick with you never see, in this case here, gold make new highs in these other currencies and then gold not make a new all-time high in dollars. Now, I'm not saying that gold is going to do that now. I'm telling you or sharing with you that these charts here have good longer-term promise. In the short run, gold's got some problems that it's got to deal with out here. But first, let's just continue going through this process out there. Okay, Peter, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and just simply close that page. Here we can take a look at a daily time frame chart for gold priced in the four major currencies out here. Here you just want to take a look at what's going on today. Are everybody Is everybody a buyer? Is somebody a buyer? Somebody is a seller. Right now, everybody's buyers out here with regard to gold. They're all making money today. It's another way to take a look at it. So that was one of the reasons why Steve he said when we opened the show, gold should be able to make a move up to the top of its daily profile at 15, 13, 40, priced in U.S. dollars out here. It's moving higher in all the currencies. It's above Stevie's uh, red line by a few bucks right now. So it looks like that would be where gold would head up to. Of course, you can see when you take a look at gold price in dollars, you can now begin to clearly see a series of lower highs and a series of lower lows. You should anticipate that that is going to continue out here. But now you've got gold on a little bit of a shorter term time frame. What we can also do, I'm going to keep that page. What we can also do is we can take a look at gold in relationship to its horizontal trading range. Now, this is a weekly chart out here. So I have the weekly and I have the monthly horizontal trading ranges out here. So the price spike that we saw in gold a few weeks ago moved all the way back down to its monthly horizontal trading range in the 1462 area. We use these as guidelines, not necessarily as right to the T. If we take a look at where gold stopped, gold stopped at 1561. I didn't write, put these horizontal lines in there, folks. These are, these are automatically driven based upon the opens and closes or the bodies of the candles out there. And what it does is it helps us identify the uh, largest congested areas. It gives us that price range, and that's what establishes those horizontal trading ranges out here. So if gold is going to move lower, if Stevie's right about gold moving lower, we know that gold needs to close below 1462. That would then take on 1426. And then you could look at 1359, 1324, uh, even the 1225 area. But we'll just take things one thing at a time. It's all about being able to identify support and resistance. And Peter, the last thing out here with regard to gold, if I'm doing that same analysis, now I have to switch to the continuous contract out here if I'm going to get a lot of data. Now, if you take a look at when gold actually topped out here back in uh, September of 2011, would you have liked to have known about the TD setup nine count, Peter, or anyone out there? because that's what it topped with. Now, when gold actually bottomed back here in December of 2015, it was a TD setup nine count bottom. You gotta love it. It's a beautiful thing.
And I can't rule out, when take a look at this monthly chart out here, that gold may not be making run for 1725. That's its resistance area. But that's what the monthly chart is showing us with regard to those breakdown and breakout levels. If we switch from monthly, we go take a look at a weekly time frame out here. From a weekly time frame, support to the downside is a 1273. 1273 on a weekly basis. If we go take a look at gold on a daily chart out here. We can see this 1490.70 area is really key. Uh, price uh, bounced off of that this morning. It's been trading right around there. We see a couple of closes, Peter, below 1490.70. Where is it that you would target that gold would pull back to? What would be its next level? And the answer is 1412.10. That's the breakout level. Below that could bring into the 1336 area. When price starts to retrace, you're always looking for it to come back to its breakout area. And we love using these uh, support and resistance lines established by those TD nine count patterns out there. Now, that was the daily. What we do know, so we can just finish off gold is gold has got topping patterns. It's got that Rhodes momentum indicator top out here. And it's got it on a daily. It's got it on a weekly as well. And with the series of higher, with lower highs and lower lows out there, there uh, and not breaking through any key levels of resistance out here 1509 or 1513 would be the uh, next one out there um, the trend is your friend and right now the trend is to the downside in goldie locks out there so hope that that helps you out peter with regard to taking a look at that and doing that same a analysis out here now if we go to some more questions uh, bill writes in will writes in uh bill it is bill writes in can we take a look at nokia we will i don't think anybody really wants to take a look at nokia talk about a gap to the downside what did they do today? Must have come out with a lack of earnings or something, some bad prognostication. You're looking at a long-term buy entry point out here. Well, we like to say stay away from long-range bars out here. Now, we can see that Nokia, in essence, was consolidated. And that's the yellow rectangle out here. So if we just simply copy and paste the yellow rectangle, now what we can do is come up with a approximation, which is equal to the consolidation pattern, as to where Nokia is likely headed to because a measured move when you break a consolidation you get a measured move way to project price it's equal to the consolidation so that takes you into about the two dollar and 81 cent area i'm not saying buy it at 281 uh, i'm saying that is the current price projection now very likely gold is going to get back there. I don't know why my current chart isn't updating. My white background chart isn't updating, but we know price is below Stevie's red line. Breakout levels were 488 and 490. We're at 388, so those levels have been crushed. If we go take a look at the weekly time frame chart here for Nokia, that was a monthly chart, by the way, that we were looking at. You can see this thing top with a TD setup nine count pattern bottom with a td setup nine count pattern uh, kind of cool isn't it and this is the easiest pattern for you to begin your technical analysis and be able to put support and resistance and know when to be cautious about an instrument and what it's doing so you're looking for a buy area nokia bill all i can say is today does not appear to be that day and you can buy this at a much lower price in the future Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got Hector. He's doing some uh, bottom fishing. He must be at about um, 1,500 feet or so because uh, uh, he wants to do some bottom fishing on Twitter. If you take a look at Twitter, gapping down, huge volume behind the move from a weekly perspective, a monthly perspective, wide-ranging bar to the downside out here. And the question is, is now a good time to nibble on it? So if we take a look at this, here's what we know. It's below the daily and the weekly profile, but uh, not below the bottom of the monthly profile. So price of 3110 um, my suggestion would be uh, wait for price to get to around 2773 and let's see what pattern is there. So that's what the profiles would suggest to you and I. If we go take a look at Stevie's other charts, and again, we're going to have to fill in the blank. We know it's trading at about 3109. This chart's not updating. I'll have to fix that after the show. But $31 takes us below breakout support areas out here inside the Twitter. By the way, Twitter had already generated a topping signal, a topping pattern, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. We know how markets make tops and bottoms. Not every single top and bottom is formed with this pattern. Not every single pattern is formed with a TD set up eight or nine count out here. But when they do show up, we pay attention. Even in Twitter, when you'd see this uh, uh, high out here back on August 2nd, it was that TD set up nine count pattern. So way back here on September 10th, when Twitter had a nice run up to the $46 area, and maybe it wasn't on September 10th that you would have sold, but on September 11th, when price broke below Stevie's green line out there, it was generating, it was confirming that Twitter had topped. Now, there were different support levels to take a look at. You had uh, profile areas, you had the breakout resistant or support level 3682 and 3522 out here even when a uh, the most recent uh, low back on October 4th it just lasted for a few days out here uh, you had a TD set up nine count but price was never able to get above Stevie's green slash red line out there and uh, so if we do take a look at wave counts I can understand why Hector would be considering bottom fishing and that is because um, yesterday marked wave number 
number seven or letter G, and today's extended low is going to get you there too. But boy, you got to be cautious with that gap down with volume. We don't see any kind of bottoming signal on a weekly time frame. The weekly time frame suggests 3084 could be support. Well, you're at 3114. So 3084, 2773, 2843, these are areas to watch. This suggests that price is still going to continue to move lower out here. And if I take a look at the monthly time frame chart for Twitter, um, price is trading below Stevie's green line, 37.98. And on a monthly basis, you can see the high out here in Twitter was a monthly TD setup, nine count high. Price could easily pull back to 1678. So, Hector, do not, I want you to go bottom fishing, but what I want is so you can feed all of us here at TFNN. Big old grouper, a big grouper out there. Um, and stay away from the small little Twitter fish out here. It looks like it could fry you, and I don't want that to happen. So thanks for writing in. Thanks to everybody for uh, writing in. I don't see any other questions out here yet by email. Nothing else inside the Tiger's Den. So let's just kind of tool around the markets and see what it is that we see. For Jay, let's go see if there's any new profiles out here. If Jay's listening in, and Jay, a couple of days ago, maybe it was even yesterday, time flies out here, we were taking a look at a potential new profile inside the Russell 2000. That shifted. It actually went away overnight. It came back about uh, two hours ago. There's a new profile it's trying to form out here. 1539 is the bottom of that box. 1560 is the top of the box. And the reason that we're paying attention really to 1539, folks, I don't have a guarantee that this profile is going to take hold. But if it does, that would be a beautiful thing. The beautiful thing would be paying attention to that support level. Because if price closes below 1539, it suggests a change in trend. Now, two, a few bucks below that is Stevie's green line, 1532. So that's the range of support for the Russell 2000 right now, the equity futures contract. It's topped with a TD setup at nine count. It was bar number eight. Price should bolt back to test Stevie's green line at 1532 or thereabouts. If price holds, it's bullish, bullish enough to say that price would go up to the 1586 level. If price closes below that, and it closes below that for two sessions, then we're looking at a retracement back to support 1489 or 1465 in the Russell 2000. So watch the new profile. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to see if it actually takes hold out there. But the one that was in place yesterday, no longer. It's shifted. 1539 is the bottom. 1560 is the top. No other profiles out here to uh, reflect upon. You do have the NQ, which earlier was trying to make a run for the top of that daily profile. It's 79.95. It has since backed off. Why did it back off? I don't know. Let's go take a look at the short-term time frame chart, see if there's anything out here on a 30-minute chart. And yeah, voila, price was moving higher. Newer, less relative energy generates a key reversal, bearish engulfing, bearish sash candle out here. Uh, this would suggest that we should see the NQ move lower and target 79.22, the bottom of its bearish structured profile. Sellers should be able to do that. If they can't do that, it just tells you how weak sellers are at the moment. That was looking at a 30-minute time frame chart out here. If we go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, trading slightly lower. It's advanced decline oscillator, pulling back as well, but still above zero. The bottom panel is a spot volatility index, still well below its 50-day exponential moving average out there. So there's plenty of liquidity. So speaking of liquidity, we haven't looked at liquidity for a while. What other instrument can we go take a look at for liquidity? Well, one would be the high-yield corporate bond fund out there, HYG. So just out of curiosity here, even though, so interestingly enough, um, if I take a look at Stevie's chart, today is, a yes, yeah, today, to yesterday was the TD setup nine count pattern. Today's a slightly higher high out here in this, but this is suggesting a potential top to go. So HYG, um, you'll, if you go track this along with the S&P 500, uh, if this is continuing to move higher, it's very hard for the S&P 500 to move lower. It just tells us about so much liquid or liquidity that is inside the market. The spot volatility X, where it trades in relationship to the 50-day is also a liquidity gauge out here. But we have a number of instruments that are identifying these topping signals, these topping patterns, and it's a reason for us to pay attention. But if those topping patterns and signals are going to mean anything, 
The door has to be busted down. Support must fail because pulling back to test support, those are your buy the dip areas out here. So that's what we've got to be paying attention to. And at this stage of the game, we just have warning shots across the bow. We don't have really any key levels of support being broken. Now, it's not entirely true. And I am not going to lie to you. There's an initial level of support that's been busted. If we take a look at a 30-minute chart here for the ES Mini, that first level was 3,005. We're trading at 3,001 right now. So we are beginning to see areas fail. Well, how about the 60-minute chart? Let's just go check it out. Price right now testing support, 3,002. We're at 3,001. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average Average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I'd say the two most interesting charts here to take a look at, uh, the Great British Pound. Let's go take a look at it. Uh, the reason why I say uh, that this is an interesting chart to take a look at, it top of the TD setup nine count pattern. 
you and I had identified that. And uh, when we saw that pattern, we uh, suggested that the uh, price was going to go ahead and pull back support. We knew that the first level of support for the uh, Great British Pound was Stevie's Green Line. That's price right now at 1.2803. And that's exactly what has been tested. If you were to see a close below that, this suggests that the pound will continue to pull back. Now, I don't have profiles out here, but the eventual price pullback would be where it broke out. 1.2206. You can see that. Uh, that was the low of that TD setup at nine count. Right now, price has been tested and rejected out here. So even though you've got a topping pattern and you've had a test of support uh, for the call on a daily basis for the Great British Pound would have to be neutral to bullish out here because support has held. So that's an interesting looking chart out there. Uh, if you were to take a look at the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen has pulled back over the last several days and tested Stevie's green line. This still remains bullish. There is no bearish structured pattern to the upside to suggest that it has topped out here. Not that it can't, but so far support has held. That's Stevie's green line, also known as the oscillator unchanged line. Uh, folks, if you'd like to learn that, just subscribe to the newsletter. There's a workshop out there that will teach you about that, and you can go ahead and figure out how to program that on your software tools out here. No uh, no secrets. If you take a look at the euro, it still has a bit to pull back. So it's going to pull back to about 1.107. That is Stevie's green line. Remember, the number can change a bit because the green line can move up, price pulls back, wherever it is. But there's an eventual test. And depending on whether test, uh, whether whether price tests and rejects or tests and moves through that will tell you the next direction for the euro. But right now, the retracement is nothing more than a normal retracement back to support after forming a topping pattern out here. Folks, thanks so much for being here. But stay tuned. Two amazing hours coming up next. Your favorite polar bear, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Stevie's son will be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Have a terrific Thursday. See you tomorrow.